Okay, um, I think we can start. Hello, everyone. I hope we can all hear me well. Um, so I'd like to thank you for uh, joining this webinar. Uh, this is our first uh, introduction into the concrete applications of Idea Statica. Um, uh, we're really excited that we are now able to launch uh, these applications with the introduction of the British uh, National Annex. Uh, so today we have planned uh, we have uh, uh, planned to show you uh, just an overview of the concrete application. So uh, with me uh, I have Kostis Hadzopoulos, who is our technical manager uh, at Idea Statica UK, and uh, Lucas as well from our uh, headquarters in Czech Republic. So we have prepared some. Um, uh, we have prepared an overview of the concrete apps that we have, um, and just to um, uh, give you some information about go to webinar so any of you who haven't used uh, this system before so in your right side of your screen you will see a control panel uh, and in the questions tab uh, you are able to ask any question you might have during the webinar so feel free to send us any question you might have we will try to answer these questions as we go through the webinar but we, if we have some time at the end, we will have a short uh, Q&A session. Um, so, as I said, um, this in, uh, webinar is all about concrete. Uh, so, we're going to uh, show you just a little bit of uh, the applications that we have. Of course, the time is limited, so we cannot go into detail uh, about all the apps. Uh, the idea is that you get just a, a, an understanding of what uh, Idea Statica can do for you in concrete design. Um, of course, many of you know Idea Statica for steel. Uh, it's, Idea Statica has become very popular because mainly because of the steel uh, application for steel connections. But in concrete, we also have some very interesting and innovative solutions as well. So just to give you a quick overview of what we have uh, in Idea Statica for concrete. So first of all, we have Idea Statica RCS. Uh, this is a software for the analysis and design of uh, reinforced uh, concrete cross sections for beams, plates, walls, and columns. Uh, it can be used for uh, many different uh, uh, elements, such as, for example, composite concrete, concrete sections, uh, it can be used for bridge, uh, bridge load grading as well and, and many other applications. We will go through some of them today, but uh, during the coming months, we will also dedicate some uh, webinars on, on these specific applications. Uh, the next uh, is Idea Statica Beam. Uh, this is an application for uh, the design and code check of concrete beams of uh, various topologies. Uh, so you are basically able to analyze a member, uh, a beam member. Um, it can be either reinforced, a standard reinforced concrete, or it can be a, a beam which has pre-tension or post-tension as well. So it covers many different uh, applications. Um, the next one is Idea Statica Detail. This is uh, actually a software that uh, uh, brings a, a breakthrough technology uh, that was developed with the help of the University of Zurich, the ETH. Uh, it brings a, a very innovative approach for concrete design and it deals with a, a, a very big problem that we had so far uh, for the design of concrete discontinuity regions. So with this software, you are able to design very quickly and safely any discontinuity region. Um, finally, we have Idea Statica BIM, uh, which is uh, basically a software that allows you to link uh, various uh, finite element software. So you are able to import uh, a, a member and uh, the load combinations from software like CI Engineer, Robot Structural Analysis, and, and others. Um, 
So in a few words, I would say that idea statica concrete can pretty much help you in all your concrete projects. So either you are a reinforced concrete expert working with mainly with buildings, or you are a precast engineer working with prefabricated concrete structures, or you are a bridge engineer working with bridges of medium or small, small spans, you are able to design very quickly and safely all these structures. Uh, something that I would like to state is that Idea Statica is not a software for the global analysis, so we are not going to deal with the overall structure. We are more focusing on individual elements, and we are linking with other finite element software, uh, like, as I said, C Engineer, Robot Structural, Access VM, and so on, uh, so that you can bring into Idea Statica uh, this element, this geometry, with the load combinations so that you can further view detailed uh, designs. So uh, I will also quickly go through today's agenda before I pass on the, the presenter to Costi. So uh, for today, we have actually prepared uh, some examples just to give you an understanding of how our, our software works. So first of all, we're going to show you how you can check a complex uh, concrete cross-section with Idea Static RCS. And this is going to be a curved uh, wall in this example. Uh, in the second uh, part, we will show you how you can, uh, you, you will show you what is the complete, let's say, design cycle of a precast arbitrary beam. So we will import this beam from CI Engineer. Uh, we will do, uh, we will add the reinforcement, we will do the design in Beam, and then we will export this into detail uh, so that we can do some further uh, modifications like adding uh, openings into this Beam and doing a very detailed uh, design of the concrete uh, discontinuity regions. Um, and uh, we will also show you uh, how Idea Statica Detail works. Uh, and this will be through an example of a bridge diagram. Finally, we have prepared a small example on uh, Idea Statica uh, BIM, and this will, uh, through this example, you will see how you can perform a bridge load rating uh, using again the beam link with uh, C Engineer. So, um, as I said, if we have some question uh, later on, we will answer uh, some of your questions. Uh, and with this, I will pass on the presenter to Costis so that we can start with the examples. Okay, Costis, you have the, you're presenting. Costas, we can't hear you. We can't hear you. Okay, can you hear me no. now? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Great. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes. Yes. Okay. Perfect. You can close your so camera get... if you want, just to yes. just to see why not. It gets. Yeah. All right. Perfect. So, again, welcome from my side. And since we don't have, we have many things to show you, I will jump straight to RCS to model the curved shear wall that Theodore uh, initially showed. Okay, it taking a little bit because it's communicating with the last server. So now I have uh, the option to start a new project and without further delay, I will start this new project. Here I can select the code. Of course, we will go with the Euro code and use the newly introduced uh, national annex of the UK. I have also the option to activate some bridge specifics or some liquid containing structure specifics, fatigue, fire resistance, etc. 
We can also analyze uh, plane reinforced cross sections, or we can also analyze pre stressed uh, cross sections. In our case, we will go with uh, the reinforced, press OK, and the new project will pop up uh, where I will move straight to inserting the cross section. Of course, I have the option to use the templates for common cross section types, but as this is not a common one, I will need to input it through a DXF file. I have already prepared this file, and I have created this as a closed polyline. Uh, I'm, so I'm selecting the outline of this cross section, and I'm inserting this in Idea Statica RCS. Now I have the option to modify its material, the concrete grade strength. So, for example, I can, I can select a lower concrete grade or even edit the details of the defined uh, material. Of course, I will not modify them. Now I will accept this one and import the cross section in Idea Statica RCS. Uh, now that the cross section is imported, I can see the characteristics related to the center of gravity of the cross section. And just to give you an understanding for the source of this section, I will move to see an engineer where you can see the model uh, of a small building with the curved shear wall. Uh, now I will isolate this shear wall and I will display uh, its, mo uh, its moment diagram or its shear diagram. And then I will ask SIA engineer to give me a result table at the critical position. You can see that all results are selected at this position. And now I will copy and paste them and collect all these results in a worksheet I have already prepared. So I'm pasting the results here, sorry. And I have also collected results for the visibility characteristic and quasi permanent combinations. I will move back to Idea Statica RCS, and then I use our table editor to import these forces. Here, I will go back to the worksheet to copy the values, paste them. I will move to the characteristic tab where I will also import the characteristic combination values. And last, the quasi-permanent and press OK to accept uh, the input. Now that the values are uh, imported, I have to define reinforcement for my cross section. Uh, before we do that, let me show you how can I modify the cover of the cross section. Here we have a preview. Uh, we have a default value of 30 mils cover, and we have a preview of the cover with a dashed line. Now say that I want to increase the outer cover uh, to 50 mils. I can just increase it like this, and you can see that all selected edges were adapted to 50 mils by moving the dashed line towards the inside of the cross section. Uh, I will not accept this change. I will use the uniform one, and I will move to the reinforcement editor well, where I will now input my reinforcement. I will start with my, my longitudinal bars, and I will distribute, I'm sorry, I will distribute uh, bars uh, evenly in the cross section. I will go with 14 mil bars 
uh, at the maximum distance of 150 mils. We have a graphical preview of this bar distribution here. And if I reduce this value, the graphical preview adapts. Let's move to the previous one. And of course, I can also change the bar steel grid. So for example, I can select B500C and press OK. My bars will, will now be positioned uh, in the cross section. Uh, the next step is to input the stirrups. So we'll use the longitudinal bars and graphically uh, create stirrups around them. Uh, uh, for each stirrup I create, I can uh, fine tune uh, its behavior. So for this stirrup, I will activate the shear check so that it participates in the shear resistance, but it will not part participate in torsional resistance. I will define by selecting the longitudinal bars. Press OK. I will define another stirrup using the same technique. Press OK. And here I can see that these bars are not vertically aligned. And this is really easy to fix. I'm clicking on the bar in question, changing its position, and the bar changed, and also the related stirrup adapted. Last, I will also add some horizontal, uh, the horizontal reinforcement in the form of stirrups. But I will ask the software not to use them for shear or torsion resistance. They will be just graphically positioned there. Let's also import the inner one. And my reinforcement is OK. I will deactivate the stirrup shapes and accept this definition for further calculation. Now I will select what kind of checks I want to perform uh, on this cross section. Torsion is relevant, also the flexural slenderness, detailing, and I will also add, activate the response uh, diagram. I will click my results. This is a really quick calculation, even if we have more than one uh, cross sections, uh, uh, more than one uh, uh, sections defined. Uh, and I will also select to display the results for the extremes, since we have many combinations. Uh, at the right, uh, at the right uh, table here, I can see. Uh, uh, the results of the check in terms of utilization. So we have 20.9% uh, utilization for the capacity checks, 39.6 for shear, 36.7 for inter interaction, etc. We also have uh, calculation tables at the bottom. Let me extend this a little bit. Uh, we have the overall tab where a summary of the calculation is displayed. Then we have the capacity tab where we, we display the interaction diagrams, where we can display more than one uh, slices of the interaction surface. We can also have uh, all components from all combinations depicted on these diagrams and even use different colors. You can fine tune this diagram uh, to your liking and uh, also export it to your report. We also have the shear calculation. Again, a table uh, 
of the code calculation parameters. Uh, we have the interaction. Here we have this, uh, this, uh, the stress and strain values for both concrete and reinforcement, where we can deactivate reinforcement or concrete or the other way around. Uh, the compressed uh, region is uh, is uh, a, we have a drawing of the compressed region with a hatched area. Then we can display the stress limitation calculation, uh, crack width calculations, and in this case the software warns me that cracks do not appear for either shorter or long-term effects. And last, we have the response for the ULS section, uh, etc. Now, all these results can be pre presented in a report, which can be exported as a, doc, a docx or PDF file. But what is most the most important from my point of view is that we can fine tune uh, the display, uh, the settings of the calculations. You can modify every aspect of the calculation, and uh, you can then, when when you fine tune it, you can save it and recall it for later use. Um, now that I have completed uh, the creation of this and the analysis of this curved shear wall, let's move back to C Engineer to another project where we will demonstrate how do we export whole structures in uh, Idea Statica. Now, this is a simple hole. Uh, this is a concrete hole which is loaded in SIA Engineer. We have created the combinations using SIA Engineer's generators. You can see here that both ULS and SLS uh, combinations are mixed. We cannot easily distinguish between them because we didn't use consistent names. And we did this on purpose because I want to show you um, a feature of Idea Statica. But before we proceed, let's discuss a little bit about discontinuity regions, because the reason we want to export this simple structure in Idea Statica is because uh, it, contain, it, it includes discontinuity regions. So what are these discontinuity regions? Um, in concrete structures, two types of regions coexist. These are the B regions, where the bernoulli navier hypothesis that deformed planes remain plain after deformation is valid, and these are colored in, the, in, uh, in yellow. And there are also the D regions where this basic hypothesis uh, is not valid. Examples of these D regions include frame corners, regions, concentrated loads, etc. And beams with openings are D regions. Uh, the whole member of a beam with openings is a D region. Uh, so, how did we calculate it? The, how did how did we calculate these so-called D regions until idea concrete detail? We used the strat and time methodology, which simplifies the structure uh, in a truss. And then cal uh, we calculate uh, the compressive and tensile forces of this truss. But the thing is that this, uh, this representation is not appropriate for the calculation of deformation and SLS checks. Uh, we also have the option to perform an advanced FV analysis, but this is time consuming. It requires an expert analyst who understands concrete behavior models, concrete behavior models, but in the end, they do not provide appropriate results for code checks. Idea Statica detail 
uses a new technology called continuous stress field method, which was developed in close cooperation with ETH. And this method can provide all ULS and SLS checks in minutes for any geometry and any loading. And here you can see some structural parts where the CSFM is applicable. And these include bridge piers, bridge diaphragms, prefabricated uh, beams and columns, precast walls, etc. So let me move back in CIA Engineer and export this structure in Idea Statica. To do this, I will use the XML uh, export of CIA Engineer. This is a document I have already prepared and we can export it. Uh, in our case, I have already exported. Uh, I, uh, I have already exported this XML file. Uh, give me a minute, and I will use the beam import. Now. I will select the exported XML file and Idea Statica imports the structure and every combination and loading, etc. I will also uh, ask from the software to classify the members of this section in groups, in similar groups. Uh, so now we have these design members, as you can see, the main beams and uh, the columns and we have the design groups so for example design group one are the columns so i will change its name to identify it easily these are the main beams and there is another group which are the secondary beams Uh, now, an interesting feature of Idea Statica is that it imported all combinations and classified them in result classes. So we identified the ULS combinations and they were uh, grouped in the ULS result class. We all, it also identified the characteristic SLS, frequent, quasi-permanent, and so on. It also identified all combinations that are uh, appropriate for the deflection calculation. Using these envelopes, I can prepare, I can display the moment diagrams. So for example, here, let's make sure that we have the ULS envelope that contains all these uh, combinations. I, I am displaying the moment diagram. I'm displaying the shear diagram and the software is set to display labels only on, on critical member parts. I'm also displaying the Excel force diagram and it's very easy to identify that this member is the critical one. Now to save some time from the calculation I will create a different design group and move this member in this design group. So remove member before from this group and create a new group called critical beam. Which contains only this beam here. Now let's proceed with the design of this beam. Uh, here, I will select the checks I want to perform on this beam, uh, which are capacity, shear, torsion, interaction, stress deep limitation, and crack width. I will remove the detailing. And one very important calculation is that of the deflections. So I will perform a detailed deflection calculation. I will remove the lateral stability because it's not appropriate for this type of beam and leave the exposure classes uh, as is. 
Now for this beam, I will I need to add some reinforcement to perform the checks. And here, uh, Idea Static automatically classifies uh, member parts in zones. So similar zones uh, have similar reinforcement. Of course, I can change this, but in this case, case I think that this is uh, the proposed grouping uh, is very convenient. Uh, we will not design zones A and B because they are uh, located in a discontinuity region, which I will export uh, to detail. We will only uh, design the zone C. So we'll skip the check of zones A and B by deactivating them. And then I will add some reinforcement on uh, on, uh, on zone C. Uh, in zone C, we have a common T section. So since this section is quite common, the software also uh, has the option to use templates, but I will not use these templates. Instead, I will import the reinforcement I have already designed in a previous project. And I can fine tune it. For example, I can select this stir up and remove it from resisting shear. Press OK. And now I can see here that the software uh, positioned the reinforcement. And I can see that it is applied on, on zone C. Uh, at this point, I can press the All button and the software performs the calculations. Now, uh, Okay, something I did something wrong. I will not investigate it further. I will just open uh, the file I have already prepared. Uh, no, so let me open it. Okay, again, let's move to the results of the calculated file. Uh, select critical beam. So, uh, in this case, when the calculation is over, we can see the overall checks, like uh, similar to RCS. So, we have uh, critical results for. Uh, Capacity, shear, torsion, etc. Uh, these results are also can also be presented uh, on the beam. Just let me deactivate. Let me display it as a line. So we have a diagram. Uh, the interaction check is 19.3. Point three. Let's apply the check value of the capacity, which is 86.9. These are applicable to member. We can display shear, torsion, interaction, stress, etc. Now that we're displaying section checks, uh, one may say that I need to have a, a better understanding of, of the check for this beam. In this case, I can export them in RCS and generate cross sections. And if I go to the result, I can have the accurate calculation for each section uh, here. Uh, here we also see the calculation for torsion where the equivalent thin walled section is presented. It's something that we skipped previously, interaction, stress limitations, Etc. I will close this and move back. And uh, now that we displayed the result, another interesting type of result is the deflection check, where we can display the total display, the deflection of the beam, which is 35 mils. And we, uh, we, you can also display uh, the deflection component, like the long term deflection or the immediate flexion, etc. 
another interesting uh, type of diagram is the stiffness diagram. So here I have the bending stiffness distribution, uh, the bending stiffness on the quick axis, and of course, the axial uh, stiffness. Again, we can have a fine-tuned report, but since we don't have too much time, again, let me move back to the reinforcement and uh, export the discontinuity regions to detail for further uh, manipulation. To do this, I will export this. Press the export button. The software displays a preview uh, of my beam. And let's say that I want to only export the discontinuity region. I will define a length and the beam part that will be exported is highlighted. In my case, I will export the whole beam. Press next. Uh, now I will export also some combinations. You may wonder why we have uh, we don't have all the combinations. The reason is that through the calculation, Idea Static identified the critical combinations. So I'm exporting them, and software will uh, open Idea Static at detail. And at this point, I will pass the presenter to Lucas that will demonstrate how uh, you can further manipulate the beam in idea static app detail so lucas there you are okay costis thank you for a word uh i will take a presenter so i hope you will see my screen with the beam with adopted beam from costis and I will start with the modeling in the application Idea Statica detail. Um, so you can see this is the geometry which was uh, exported via BIM, BIM. And uh, there are automatically predefined uh, some bearing plates. And uh, now the software automatically warned to me that the structure is uh, statically overdeterminate and uh, I have to put some boundary conditions. So uh, we will go through the plus button and here is some portfolio of uh, boundary conditions uh, which can be relevant for some uh, many types of the structures. We will use some point bearing plate. And uh, the point bearing plate, the first support uh, with the constraints in the X and the Z direction will be re related to the existing, existing plate, BP1. I can name it, BP1. Okay. And uh, after that, I can copy the operation and change it to BP2. Um, yeah, I will change the model to 2D view, remove the names, and you can see what happened. The boundary conditions are related to the bearing plates. <clears throat> now uh, the beam will be consisted uh, with many openings, which will be in the middle part of the beam. So I will switch on the name of the beam or the parts of the beam to more precise um, putting of the holes to the beam and use the plus button where I will add the opening. This is some part of discontinuity. The opening will have a circular shape. And the, and the diameter of uh, the opening will be 0 0.3 meters and will be related to the member M3. And now we will use for coordinates, master and the insert point and uh, X and Z position. So I change it slightly about 50 millimeters down in the Z direction. 
it's it's related to the master point and in the instant point zero zero and now i would like to have the other opening uh with the distance for 40 centimeters from the master point eight so i create a copy change the master point to eight and shift it slightly about 0 0.4 meters in the global direction in the global direction x okay and now for symmetry i will use the copy operation and change the master point to the 6 and i have to change the posit from pos uh, the x direction from positive value to negative value so now you can see the 3d rendering of the beam with the openings i have finished designing or modeling the geometry part and uh, i can move to the load step i will change the view to the 2d and go to the load step uh, the loads is uh, automatically derived from uh, internal forces uh, exported from SIA engineer. So you don't bother with the putting with the putting uh, the external loads, and also the combinations uh, which was exported from the Costis example from BIM are inside uh, are inside this application and um, are prepared for using for analysis also the load cases the load cases and the combinations mainly the combinations are sorted out to the uls or sls checks now i will jump to reinforcement and but i don't know how to reinforce it so we have a design tools for putting the reinforcement i will use it and i have two options the first one is uh, a linear analysis where uh, you receive some tensile areas and compression zones so let's say standard analysis linear and the other one is a topology optimization which will be shown uh, later on the on the on the next example uh, for speeding up um, this let's say session i have prepared a templates of the reinforcement which will be used for this type of the beam it, this is a parametric template of uh, the reinforcement so if you change the topology slightly it's automatically um, adopted and adapted on this on this type uh, of the beam of the topology I will switch off the linear analysis and you can see now you can see the reinforcement okay you can you can see the reinforcement layout with the stirrups and uh, also uh, the stirrups are automatically cut it off uh, if uh, the the opening is um, located okay uh, now is everything prepared uh, for nonlinear calculation so I will go to the check and I can run I can run the nonlinear nonlinear calculation <clears throat> you can see I have I have obtained uh results immediately and uh, here in the first step you can see some summary overview of all results for all components if i will go closer you will see the maximum values for um, concrete in the compression for reinforcement in the tension and in the compression also and the anchorage check or some anchorage length so i will go deeply uh, to the details check also i can uh, see the reactions and i will go 
to the strength tab. In the strength tab, uh, we can see the maximum value or utilization in the comp concrete, which is compared to the designed value of, uh, of the concrete in the compression. I can also switch on the value, minus 5.5 megapascal. The direction of uh, the principal stress and the principal strains around the opening, you can see the flow of the stress. I can switch on also the mesh and also the KC, KC factor, which reduces the strength of the, of the concrete due to compression softening. Now I can jump to reinforcement, code check, and uh, you can see that the maximal values was uh, around the opening. And I can switch on the stress, let's say, on the rebar and uh, you can see that the maximum value was uh, 159 megapascal uh, in the tension. The, up, the upper bars are in the compression. Here is the depth which is sorted out um, gradually from the maximal to the minimal value. Now let's go to the anchorage. In the, uh, the anchorage, and, the, and uh, his maximum value is uh, in the position above the right support with the utilization 80.1%, where I can switch on uh, the total force in the rebar, in every rebar, in the compression and in the tension, and also the bone stress, some shear stress between the concrete and between the reinforcement. And also the auxiliary, where uh, you can see some deflection of the beam. Now let's go to the bill of material because it's very important for the price of the structure. Here is some total length of the rebars, the weight of the rebars and the shape. Uh, let's say this drawing or this reinforcement can be exported uh, to the DXF where you receive some layout. Uh, of the reinforcement which are inside the beam. And the final part is uh, the report where the report can be exported or automatically can be printed out or can be exported to uh, dots files, Microsoft Word or some, some PDF. Uh, it's a fully editable format, so you can change uh, the layout of, uh, of the list or of the report. You can switch on and switch off some parts, um, some parts uh, from the left navigator, like geometry loads, topology optimization, or some parts of the results. And now I will show you some just briefly what is involved in uh, this um, protocol. So you receive some geometry, loads, some uh, scheme of the reinforcement, summary overview of all results, and each detailed results for concrete and for steel also. This is the report and uh, let's say this is uh, the code check uh, of the beam according according to error code, and now let me now let me show uh, show you the diaphragm. But before I will open Idea Statica, and I will show you some uh, really uh, really um, impressive templates of uh, the diaphragms. It's really we'll open detail. And show you the templates of uh, the diaphragms. OK, I will open the project. And Idea Statica offer you some portfolio of the predefined templates. I will use a diaphragms. 
and uh, we have prepared some uh, currently used, uh, some frequently used uh, type of the diaphragms. So I will show you only one, the box girder diaphragms, where this template is fully editable and you can fit it on your project really quickly. <clears throat> also, I will show you our new feature. At first, this is the reinforcement or the templates of uh, the diaphragm. I can switch on or and switch off the reinforcement and here is fully editable format of uh, the diaphragm with the reinforcement also because it's a parametric template. And what is the new feature? Let's say this is the uh, partially loaded areas. Uh, as many engineers know so that uh, the, this is the areas where some triaxial stress can appear. And if you will use some confinement, you can increase the strength of the concrete, let's say three times according to Eurocode. So it's implemented in this 2D solutions uh, of the diaphragms. We have prepared also for you uh, the loads, which are relevant for uh, for a design. This is uh, some uh, self-weight or shear stress flow, which can be which can be exported or imported uh, from from the DXF. I will turn off the application and show you the real example of the diaphragm. So this is the real example where everything is uh, designed and uh, reinforced. So also the loads, here is, or here are some load cases like self-weight. I will turn off um, the reinforcement for better view. So self-weight, longitudinal pre-stressing. This is the secondary effect of, uh, of, of the pre from the pre-stressed tendons in the longitudinal way. Um, superimposed dead load in the form of the linear load, which can be applied also like a line load. Transverse pre-stressing from the unbonded tendons, which will go through uh, the plates and also the shear stress flow, which how I mentioned before, can be exported from the DXF. And I will show you how to do that. You, I can use a line load, DXF. I will select a diaphragm. This is drawing of the diaphragm. I can select the curve, give it, and uh, I will receive this form or this shape of uh, the line load. Now I mentioned that we have a solution for design. This is a topology optimization and you receive some map, some maps of the tensile areas, which are the blue one and the compression fields. It's uh, relevant, it's, it's, it's relevant for uh, every actual uh, load which is acting on the on the on the diaphragm, <clears throat> and I can change I can change the effective volume of the diaphragm, and the topology will be changed according to effective volume. These are the areas where uh, the where if you put there the reinforcement, it will be maximal maximally utilized in the tension, <clears throat> and also the results. I have pre-calculated this uh, example, and I will show you what is the impressing on this um, on this um, uh, application that we have also SLS checks, so serviceability limit checks, so stress limitation for long-term and the short-term effect with the maximum value above the bearing, also the deflection check with the deformed shape. It's a non-linear deflection and also the auxiliary, some tensors of, uh, of the stresses, compression and the tension. I, I mean, uh, principal strain and principal stresses. So I think it's all from my side. Uh, I will pass the presenter to Costes and he will continue in the showing. Thank you, Lucas. 
Okay, so you can take a presenter because this. Okay, give me a minute. Mm -hmm. Can you make me the presenter, please? Because I don't think I have this option. Okay, I'll try to do it. Thank you. Uh, now you're not... now 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 you're a presenter. Okay. 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 Thank you, Lucas. It was very, it was really interesting. Now I have to move to go a little bit faster because we're running out of time. Uh, so to to sum it up a little bit and uh, show uh, the use of the tools that we have demonstrated so far, I will uh, uh, show you a couple of slides for a case study of an actual project from Project Plus AS. This is a design office in Czech Republic. And what their main occupation is the design of precast reinforced concrete beams. And in this case, they had uh, an industrial hole and they had a beam of 24 meters span and they wanted to minimize the weight. I will show you how they achieved a 15% a weight reduction. Uh, so the first step, was to, ident to correctly identify uh, and modify the D regions, which has, are, is the geometry of the variable height cross section. Then, uh, since they were really experienced with the strut and tie methodology, they used three strut and tie uh, uh, configurations found in the literature for this case and they compared the model with idea statica detail because they wanted to verify the choice of the strut and time model and this is re this was really important because uh, they wanted to also add some openings uh, just to increase uh, the weight reduction and these openings should not uh, uh, should not disrupt the strut and tie model. So, idea statica detail helped with the position of the openings and the calculation of the maximum opening size, which leads to an optimal, which leads to an optimal uh, beam design, which you can see here uh, with the reinforcement. Uh, so, we, we at this point. We conclude the example of the hole, and I will quickly move to the bridge load rating example. But before I do this, I have prepared a couple of slides just to define the, ter the term bridge load rating because this is not strictly uh, defined. So what we do in, uh, in Idea Statica is that we have defined a procedure which allows the determination of uh, the capacity of the bridge, but in terms of the maximum allowable vehicle weight, which is really important. And to do this, we perform an iterative calculation. So you have an, the existing bridge. And uh, what we do is that we either increase or decrease the vehicle weight in steps uh, to reach the maximum capacity of the bridge. And we present this. Uh, in in terms of tones, uh, and we do this with the definition of a multiplication factor, which mul multiplies uh, the actual vehicle weight. And without further delay, let me jump to the engineer model of an actual bridge that Theodore demonstrated. This bridge is located in the Czech Republic. It is a historic structure because it was built uh, in the beginning of the 20th century. In CI Engineer, we have created uh, the, the vehicle positions automatically, and we have exported this through the XML in Idea Statica. Since we have already demonstrated the XML import, 
I have I will go uh, I will move to idea statica model again we have uh, identified the critical groups the critical arts and the critical beams uh, and uh, we can also identify the critical sections of these beams uh, throughout the concrete design I will not go through this as we don't have too much time and uh, but I will go straight to the bridge load rating where we define our data and we have this critical beam and uh, we, we select and activate the checks that we, we will perform on the critical sections of the beam uh, we also have an initial rating factor here we, we can see that there are two factors uh, actually there are three but the third one is deactivated these are for the normal traffic load and the reserved traffic load and before I proceed just let me display that this very important thing we, we are classifying the normal traffic loads uh, in every position in this result class and also the reserved uh, load case in this uh, load cases and the reason we need to do this is because we need to increase this load in steps to identify the capacity of the bridge so let me move back to the bridge load rating results and after we ident identify the loads uh, the initial estimate factors etc we need to define the check positions uh, in this case i have already defined the middle uh, check the, the middle the middle of this critical beam it's very easy to add positions uh, by coordinates uh, what is very important is that we have the loads from CIA engineer uh, classified in load groups and you here you can find the, uh, the partial load factor uh, the partial gamma factors and the psi factors and this is very important because in the UK the authorities have identified that the assessment pro procedure and the the assessment rules for bridges are different from the design rules for uh, an actual bridge so it is very important to have access to all these factors and be able to modify them we then go to the load cases where we define uh, we group the load cases uh, the biggest part of this procedure is automatic here for the traffic loads you can uh, also have a dynamic factor in case you, the, your software does not uh, support this you can add it here in my case this is one and also I have the, the traffic load in tones and this this is important as you will see later on the last step is I will use let me delete all these combinations and the last step is to generate my combination and uh, my combinations from these load cases at the relevant groups uh, idea statica generated all this uh, all these combinations and the next step is to, to start the iterative calculation to find to determine uh, the load rating we will not wait for the calculation to complete we will move to the solved model here it is just recalling the results so it is not it will not take long Let's move to the critical beam. And again, we have uh, uh, the section checks. I'm sorry, it, it's in the concrete design. We have to move to the results.
today. It recalled the results. And uh, at this short table here, you can see that the factors I mentioned uh, before is 1.80, which is multiplied with the vehicle in tons. And so we know that the capacity of this bridge is 99 uh, point, point, uh, uh, is 12.2 tons, and this brings this section in a capacity of 99.9. .9. Of course, we can display the actual calculation for this section, and in case we need to have a detailed overview of the calculation, we can uh, go to the RCS and display the results for this section. Uh, so I think that I concluded with this. So uh, I will pass the presenter back to Tudor in case we have any okay. questions. Thank you, Kostis. That was a really nice presentation. Um, I'll just uh, take over the presenter. So yes, uh, we actually managed to just go six minutes beyond our time. So that's not bad. Um, I hope that um, our webinar pretty much gave you an idea, an understanding of what Idea Statica can do for you in concrete design. Of course, we couldn't go you know, too much in detail, but uh, if you uh, want to see more, uh, feel free to download uh, a trial version at ideastatica.com and you would be able to uh, test it yourself, use it in your own uh, projects, and, and please let us know uh, if you have any questions on that. Uh, after the webinar, you will receive a, a really short uh, survey, so please uh, fill this survey. It will uh, give us an understanding of uh, how did we do in this uh, webinar and uh, what are the possible, let's say, any comments that you might have. So that would be really useful for us. And we will also have the recording uh, ready by tomorrow. Uh, it will be uploaded in our uh, website on webinars section and on YouTube as well. So um, with this, uh, I think we can uh, uh, close this webinar for today. Uh, thank you very much for joining. Uh, we certainly hope that, you, that it was interesting for you. And we uh, hope to see you in one of our next webinars. So thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye.